scientific notation. Switching from scientific notation to standard form, and then from standard form back to scientific notation. So why scientific notation at all? This kind of format of writing is going to help us write really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers in a shorter format. So it's easier to add, subtract, multiply, and divide them later. So when you're writing in scientific notation, the number in the front, it would be in this blank right here, is going to be something between 1 to 10. So it's a small value that we can look at. And then it's always going to be multiplied by a power of 10. So times 10 raised to and this would be an exponent value up here. So that exponent's going to represent how many times we had to move the decimal to get that value to be between 1 and 10. So if it's a negative exponent, it means this number's going to be really, really small, and that's how many times we had to move to the left. And if it is a positive exponent, this number's really, really big, and that's how many times we would need to move it to the right to create our original standard form. So switching from standard to scientific. So if you have got a normal number, and you can look down below at our two examples here, and we want to switch it into scientific. We want to start by moving your decimal and counting how many times we had to move it. How many times we had to move is going to be your exponent. And we're trying to create a number between 1 and 10. That new value will go in the front. The number of times you moved it is going to become your exponent. And if it's a big number, it's going to be a positive exponent. And if it's a small number, it's going to be a negative exponent. So let's see what this looks like. Our first example is 56,000. Sometimes with our big numbers, you're not going to see the decimal, but remember it's after the number. So that's our decimal point right there. Now we're going to have to move this decimal to the left because we're trying to make this number smaller and smaller until we're somewhere between 1 and 10. I'm going to move it there. And then I would have 5,600, still not small enough. Move it again, we're at 560. Again, we're at the number 56. And one more time, and we've got it. If we move it right between the 5 and 6, we would have the number 5.6. So that would be our new value in the front, 5.6 times 10 to the, and this is where you go back and count how many times did we move that. So we moved it once, twice, three, four times, and it was a big number, so it is a positive four exponent. That is our scientific notation for that. Now let's try it again, but let's do it with a really small number. This one's got a lot of zeros in there, so we're going to have to keep moving quite a few times. This time we're going to the right. So we're going to keep moving and keep moving until you're right in the middle of the 3 and the 4. So that would leave us with the number 3.4, which is within that range of 1 to 10. And because we moved to the right this time, these are going to be negative exponents. And let's count how many times we move there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. So a negative 7 is our exponent. Now, while we can go from standard to scientific, we can also go the other way. If we are given scientific form, we can switch it to standard form. So if that's the case, keep in mind we're going to start this time with our exponents. We're going to move our decimal that many number of times. If it's positive, we're going to move to the right. If it's negative, we move to the left. And we're going to just fill in zeros as we need, so that way we have all of our spots taken care of. So let's look at this first one, 2.8 times 10 to the 9. So I'm going to move this decimal 9 times, and because it's positive, to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's going to be my new decimal location. Now what I like to do is make these little humps, so that way I know when I go back, how many zeros to fill in those humps? So each hump gets a nice little zero. This is a nice really big number here. Let's see. This is 2,800,000,000. So there's a nice giant number there. That's eight zeros in there. So 2,800,000,000. 
Put all those zeros in there. That's your final answer. Really, really big number. Now let's try one with a negative exponent. That just means we're going to be moving to the left. So I'm going to start us a little bit farther to the right here so we can go this way. We're going to move the decimal three times. One, two, three. Add the zeros you need in there. And we end up with 0 0.0083.